Hey guys, welcome to Subnautica. Uh, this is one of my favorite games. I've been playing this almost every day for like the better part of this year. Um, it's just to give you like a quick summation. It's a game. Actually, no, you'll find out. We're just going to start a new game, dive right in. Yeah, but I love this game. I've been playing it a lot. Um, there's a lot of different game modes. There's a lot of... Um, uh, how should I put it? Like custom customability. Um, you can do a lot of different things with the game. Um, it's pretty great. All right, here we go. Attention. This sounds good. Everything's fine. Launch in three, two, one. Huh. Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh. Cool. Oh, that's probably fine. Oh, that's also probably good. No concerns here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Oh, good. Fire. Excellent. Um, maybe I'll just do this. I got an excellent. Nice. All right. Fuck. No internet. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered oh, good. an optimal outcome. This PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Oh, good. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. Uh, let's see. Take the water and the nutrient blocks. Take the health. Okay. Uh, everything's fucked. Um, Alright, well, our most immediate concern is probably just getting titanium, so let's do that. So the premise of the game is you crash land on a completely aquatic planet um, after being on a spaceship. Aurora suffered orbital pile failure. Yeah. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. And you're completely alone. And it's just, you just have to survive. That's it. It's a basic exploration survival game. Although it's not as basic as you might think. There's a lot of different things you can do uh, once you get later in the game. But the beginning is very much just survival. You know, monitoring your O2, your food, your water, that sort of thing. Alright, so let's see what we got. Alright, so we can turn that into titanium. Titanium is probably your most um, most used resource. Everything is titanium based, so um, you do need a lot of that. Although we're going to need, see, like there you go, using titanium to make an O2 tank. So now my O2 went from 45 seconds to 75 seconds of uh, underwater time, which is a huge difference, but is still uh, not very great. You can't go very deep with 75 seconds on the clock. Um, so the number one thing I noticed when I first started a game is my mobility is seriously hindered. Um, this is about this right here is as fast as I can go which is, you can see, is not fast at all. Um, it makes it really hard to catch fish. Come here, bastard. There we go. And you just pick them up like that. Um, where the, whoa. Am I seeing shit? Okay, no, I was like, what's going on? Come here. Come on. Right. New creature discovered. 
So then we'll take these guys back here. See how slow I am there? So you can like build fins and stuff to make yourself faster, but ultimately I'm going to need a sea glider um, to really increase my exploration range. Mmm. Thus rendering them safe for human consumption. <laughs> Delicious. It is common for those accustomed to synthetic foods to be repulsed by eating an animal carcass. <laughs> Remember that humans survive this way for millennia. You can too. So there's the Aurora. As you can see, it completely crashed um, on this planet. And uh, this is it. This is the whole world here. It's just. It's just water, and this life pod, and anything that I build, um, which I have to collect from raw resources. So there's certainly, this is going to be more than one episode. Um, this, this is probably going to be a series. Um, come on. Come, come here. Alright. You know what, let's not worry about that right now. My food's good. Let's just worry about increasing my mobility. So to do that... We're going to get some rubber, which we can get over here. So you can do these kelp forests. There's different biomes in, in uh, the world. So this is the safe shallows. It's generally safe area, no predators, things like that. This is the kelp forest at the very beginning of it. Uh, once you go into here, you have to worry about, um, what are they called? Um, shit, what are they called? 30 seconds. I forget, but they're, um, stalkers. Yeah, they're, they're fish that are pretty fast, have huge teeth, and do considerable damage. So you have to be mindful of those guys. They like to hang out in the kelp forest. But right now we're interested in these things here. Pick up a couple of these. So you can make lubricant and, um, silicone rubber out of those. So as my exploration range increases, you know, once I have more O2, once I can travel quicker, we can go to different parts of the world and things like that. Um, right now we're kind of confined to a small area because of my O2 and um, mobility limitations. So let's see. We're going to... See, we want to make fins, right, so we can travel faster. Enhanced swim speed by approximately 15%. That's huge. So we need two silicone rubber for that. So for do so to do that, we're going to use that seed cluster to create some of that. And there you go. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. So, as you can see here, even if I had all the ingredients for the Sea Glide, I wouldn't be able to build it because I don't know what the ingredients are. So one way to discover what the ingredients are is to scan parts of the, um, the parts that you find laying around. Um, and so in order to do that, we'll need a scanner, which will require a battery and some titanium. So as you can see, we have the titanium, but we need a battery. So, in order to make a battery, we need two mushroom and a copper ore. Sometimes you can find copper in here. Nice. All right. Copper is an essential component of all. So then now all we need our acid mushrooms. The ability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Now we can make that battery. And that gives us the ability to make a scanner. So now we can use the scanner to... Right. What the thing is saying. Okay. So there's a sea glide fragment in here I'm scanning. Alright, so we have 50% of the blueprint there, so if I find another piece and scan it, we'll be able to have the ingredients to build the sea glide. Uh, which is, again, huge. 
That's what we were really hoping for. It'd be great if it was over here, but instead we have a chair. So chairs and things like that obviously become more important when you're building like a base and things like that. We're still a little off from that. Um, so yeah, one way to check for parts is to look around the wrecks and things like that. Um, not really seeing anything here though. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's just collect what we can and not drown. So, later in the game, the, the, the like, spaceship's core will blow up, and that'll create radiation, or a radiation field around the wreck site, um, at which point I will need a radiation suit. So right now, that hasn't happened yet, so this is an opportunity to kind of explore that region until that happens. So right now I'm going through a cave. Sulfur deposits in the local cave collecting systems. quartz. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Okay, so that's a crash fish. That's that definitely gonna hurt me. I'm surprised it didn't. Wow. Okay. As you can see, it's starting to get dark, so there is a day-night cycle in this game. Um, which will affect our ability to receive power at our base and things like that, because everything is, in the beginning, generally going to be solar-powered, because you're building in the shallows, and that's your best area for um, solar power, basically. It's just the most viable for now. Uh, as you get later in the game, you can do, like, nuclear power, bioreactor. Um, you can also do thermal energy, things like that. Um, but those require, obviously, specific inputs like thermal energy or um, biomass to break down into energy or nuclear rods, uh, which require uranite crystals, which are not easy to come by, uh, but provide a lot of power. So it just kind of depends on what your energy needs are. And your energy needs increase as you uh, have more things in your base. It requires more energy to power and things like that. Alright, so looking at our PDA, we have our blueprints here. We can like go through here and see everything that we can build. So right now the high capacity O2 tank is what I'm moving towards. So we already have a standard O2 tank. We need some glass, we have enough titanium, but we also need some silver ore, which is not always easy to come by. Um, but we're also looking for sea glide parts and generally anything we can make here. Oh. I can make that right now. Okay, that's actually important. Detecting increased local radiation levels. Trend so is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet four. That that's the radiation that I was talking about. Um, Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. Yeah, so there's actually, you can't kill anything in this game, except with the knife. Um, you can, like, kill individual fish and things like that, mostly for eating. Uh, requires, you know, them to be dead anyway. Um, actually, I don't think it does. I think you just grab them alive and cook them alive. <laughs> we can test that theory. Shit. See, this is when it would be nice to have a sea glide. You can just... Swim faster. Okay, so that fish is alive. I didn't kill it with a knife or anything. Yeah, you can... You can cook them alive. See, basically, you don't really have to kill anything in this game. It's not necessary. It's kind of going overboard. Um, but it's also not a bad idea. Okay, so one thing that is of concern to us is... We only have one bottle of water left. So we're almost certainly going to need more water pretty soon. 
Uh, so we can create disinfected water by using coral tube and bleach. So if we look here, bleach requires coral tube and a salt deposit. So now that we have a knife, we can go collect, where is it? There we go, coral tube samples. And then all we have to do is find salt, which is pretty easy to find. All right, that should be plenty. That's plenty. All right, so now we're looking for salt. Salt is easier to find in some biomes rather than others. Um, right now, oh, there's no. Sometimes you can find salt in the kelp forest, um, not as easily as the grassy plateaus, which I think I'm going to go for. That's going to be over here. Oh, wait, there's some salt. So that's what salt looks like. It's just like a deposit like that. Oh, there's some more. Local scans show a nearby cave entrance, depth 90 meters, leading to an unknown environmental biome. So there are a lot of cave systems in this game, which can be good and bad. Um, it can be good, obviously, because you can find resources, blueprints, things like that, but it can be bad um, because you you can accidentally asphyxiate yourself because you don't have access to the surface because um, you're in a cave system. All right, so that, this looks like a scannable part here. Short range like scans suggest this bio oh, supports extensive okay. biodiversity and connects to a number of small cave Oh, there we go. Blocks. Okay, so now we can build a bioreactor. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten it that easily before. So we're just going to look for more salt. This is a cave system. I believe this is the beginning of the Jelly Shroom Cave. Yeah. Uh, we can't go down there. The risk of asphyxiation is just too great right now. Um, so once I have a better O2 tank, maybe even a means to dive down there, so like with a sea moth or something like that, we can do that. Uh, right now, I think it's it would be wiser to worry about, um, you know, water, food, basic needs, things like that, mobility, um, O2. As you can see, it takes a, a lot of time to go up to the surface, get oxygen. This is what I mean by having your mobility seriously limited. Um, So let's see what we got for the O2 tank. High capacity. So we'll need some glass, which we can... We need one more quart for that. And some silver, yes. So finding silver is always kind of tricky. You need to look in a sandstone. You need a sandstone deposit, um, which are, in my experience, not easy to find. So here's one. This is what they look like different than the limestone. All right, so sweet. So we got some silver. There's silver. Um, so then, let's see. We just need quartz. That's all we need. We just need quartz. Um, and we can find that in the shallows, so we should probably start making our way back to the life pod, wherever it is. Okay. But first, oxygen, because that's important. So this game's, I know it's a little slow paced in the beginning. There's not a whole lot going on right now. Um, as things pick up and I have a better O2 tank and I have a better means of transportation, this game will be much more interesting. So I apologize if it's a little slow in the beginning. Um, you know, subsequent episodes will almost certainly be more interesting. Oh, well, let's see, we got some, make, find some copper in here. Nice. Um, these are hoverfish. These guys are incredibly easy 
to catch. As you can see, they're very nice and slow. Thirty seconds. There's not really an advantage to scanning the life forms. Just, you know, it's just a way to learn more about the game and applications of uh, different organisms and things like that. For example, these like little pink guys that you see floating around. You can create um, water out of them. Although it's not my preferred method because they're kind of few and far between. So like these guys, bladderfish. Um, you can create water out of them. But it's not really, in my own experience, a very reliable way of staying hydrated. It's more reliable to create bleach and then create this affected water from the salt water. Bleach is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds and purifying water. So just create a bunch of these and this will kind of eliminate our, or at least for a little while, our water needs. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against So for each bleach you get two water, which is a pretty good deal. Alright, so now we're just loaded up with water. Yeah, we got plenty of water now. Um but we still need some quartz, so we're gonna, because our inventory is getting kind of filled, we're gonna dump some things in here. Just anything and everything. Okay. So, actually it might be wiser. Let's create a locker. So for titanium, we'll give you a locker. A locker is additional storage. Um, you can deploy it anywhere, which is really helpful. I usually just deploy it right down here. Close the life pod. Here we go. You can label it and everything. Um, I usually don't bother in the beginning just because I kind of have an idea of what's already in there. Okay, so let's get one more health kit just in case we get injured, a fabricator. Okay. Now, let's go look for that extra quartz so we can finally build a more expanded um, O2 tank. Sometimes you'll find quartz in there. Um, so quartz is usually found in a cave system. So maybe there might be some down here. Although... There is a risk associated with that. As you can see, there's heat damage your character can be subject to, albeit it's pretty mild damage. Um, still worth reckoning, though. Um, Alright. Let's check over here. Oh, let's check this box. You never know when you're going to find a part. If you can find a sea glide part like this, that's huge. Alright. Excellent. So now this will this competes with our ability to make this. Um, having a sea glide is incredibly important. Okay, so we're gonna get some oxygen, and then let's check that cave system there. All right. So there's definitely gonna be some quartz in here. Yep, there it is. So that sound? Yeah, that was crash fish. They just basically chase you until they make contact with you and then they blow up, which are what are in these eggs here. Eggs are only useful for hatching um, in a alien containment unit, which I don't have right now. I don't have the blueprint for that. So we will worry about that in the future. For now, we're more concerned about um, just basic needs. Much more basic needs. Okay. See what I mean by you, how you could easily get asphyxiated in that sort of environment? There's no clear way to get to the surface, so that is a risk with cave systems. Get another egg here. Um, I believe that is a rabbit ray egg, so like one of those rays right there flying around. Oh, I think I saw something in there. Oh, it's just some garbage. Cool. Okay, never mind. 
but now I think we can build that um, O2 tank so we don't have to go to the surface as much, uh, which again, huge. Alright, so for that we're going to need, let's see, two glass, four titanium, and a silver ore. Glass, titanium, and silver ore. Okay. So first we're gonna need to make that glass out of the quartz. And now we can make oh wait. I forgot you have to actually have it in your inventory. There you go. Now we can make the high capacity. Alright. Excellent. So I just went from 75 to 135 seconds. That's a big difference. And now our main concern is building that sea glide. So for the next episode, um, we'll be working on building that sea glide. See ya.